Hello there. So in today's lecture, we're going to talk about the nature and scope of selling strategy. As part of any complete marketing strategy, part of that will include how the product is going to be sold, what methodology. Um, that can take the form of many different methods. It could be direct channels, it could be through the internet, distributors, direct to retail. There's a wide variety. And part of the overall marketing strategy has taken into account the unique target market, the actual product that, that's being sold, and what the environment looks like to determine the best method. So this lecture, we're gonna look at the, the portion of sales management, and specifically is in a case where the choice has been made in the marketing strategy to use a professional direct sales method. Um, using direct sales agents. So this topic, uh, specifically, we're gonna hone down into the development and directing of the sales force. So, in order to do that, the very first thing, as part of that, is recruiting and selecting the sales talent. So the, the very first phase, and we'll dive down into these in detail as we go along, but the first is planning for the recruitment and selection, how we're gonna find the people, and then actually doing the recruiting. What methodologies we're going to use to recruit the right salespeople for the team that fit the target market and fit the product. And then the eventual selection and hiring. Um, how we bring those people on board, what criteria. So in the planning stage, we must do first a job analysis. You know, what type of task are we asking the salesperson to do? What are their responsibilities? Is it within a territory? Um, are they given an account list? Are they on their own to do their prospecting? That kind of thing. We need to understand that to tailor that to the right type of candidates. Job qualifications. Is the product highly technical? Is it a commodity product? You know, all the parts of the marketing strategy have to be taken into consideration to look at what aptitude, skills, knowledge, and what kind of personal traits are needed to be successful as a salesperson in that market and for that product. And then the job description, coming up with a written summary of that job that entails what the qualifications are, what we're looking for, how that position will interface with the rest of the company. So now that you've got that part done, and that is a, a, an involved process that would take into consideration uh, input from HR, finance, overall strategy. It's a major consideration. So once that's done, move into locating. How do you find the people? There's a wide variety of ways. It could be career fairs, college career fairs, online career sites, internal, references from other departments, people that may be interested in sales um, or have that aptitude, employment agencies. So what's some other ways you could think of? One way, that you know does that comes to mind is looking at your competitors. Who are the most successful salespeople that your competitors are using? Maybe they're looking for a change, and as a competitive advantage, you know, maybe you recruit them. Um, I know me personally, I have uh, done that on occasion, <laughs> um, and through referrals, um, it's a great way to look for them. Um, in today's time, there's there's such a high employment level, there's a lot of competition for top caliber salespeople. Um, and they can command uh, a, a pretty high salary and, and benefits package. So enticing them to come work for you, you, know, you have to be creative in how you're locating them. So in the next phase, once you've got your candidates uh, selected, or, or have your methodology for how you're gonna acquire them, and one thing I would add, I would recommend that in any locating or recruiting phase that you use multiple channels. Um, the best candidates that you could be in a variety of different ways, you know, using LinkedIn profiles, looking at competitors, using a recruiter, use all of these together to find a good pool of candidates because you wanna have a, a broad enough selection that you're looking at all possible talent that matches your marketing strategy. 
So now that you've got those people selected, got your candidates, how do you evaluate them? A lot of times, you know, it may start with a phone screen, at least an initial assessment, um, gathering what their expectations are, explaining to them a little bit about what your marketing strategy is, what your product is, and what you're looking for for a salesperson. From there, you may narrow it down and, and narrow your pull down to a point of doing in-person interviews. Those interviews can take a wide variety depending on the structure of the company. It may be one-on-one -on -one with the sales manager. It may be with the sales manager and other input from peer reviews, um, a peer interview with other salespeople that are already on the team to get their input. Does this person have the right aptitude, the right fit with the culture, the right fit with the product, the right experience? It's always good to have that peer view as well in my opinion. Um, assessment. And this also will vary depending on the nature of the role. Does it require written questionnaires? It may, depending on if it's a highly technical product, uh, to gauge the, uh, the, the skill level or the knowledge level of the candidate. Role plays is a great way. Um, a stage scenario of a sales environment, have them play out how they would position a product, how they would communicate with a potential buyer, how they would prepare for that. And then also ride-alongs, taking, taking them actually out to different sales calls and sales meetings to see how they interface with clients. Um, let them get a feel for your product and get a feel for your company. Is it a fit for what they're looking for? Is this really a two-way thing? And then lastly, of course, the background check making sure that everything that they have purported on their resume matches up. And so now you've done the evaluating, you've selected your candidates, what's next? Training. Training is not a one-time thing. I would say it's a continual loop of development. The business environment today, products are constantly changing. Target markets are evolving. There's outside influences to the target market. There's development of the the total environment of the firm, the firm may change a little bit. So that's why it's a continual loop of development. So it may start in this cycle, and I've got a little graphic here just to kind of depict a little bit of that, but start with assessing their needs. You know, does the, the product warrant a very deep dive into the features, capabilities, benefits, and tailor that to it, to the product. Um, setting a training objective, evaluating those, and then designing the program, delivering that to the sales force. And then once that's done, as changes evolve, a refresh. There's typically a, a lot of change, and, and what I see most often in sales environments is uh, training um, is very periodic. There's constant updates to products. That's the reason it's, it's a really a continuous process. So now that you've got them on board, you've got them trained, you've got a program to keep them trained, now you get into directing the sales force and really doing the management piece of it. So in management, one thing I would draw a distinction between in directing the sales force, there's a difference between leadership and management. Leadership is an attribute. That's the activities that influence others to achieve the goals. Doesn't necessarily mean that's the sales manager. Sales leadership can be a quality in a salesperson and how they're interfacing with their peers, with their clients. Setting an example. The actual task of sales management is managing the organization, managing the function, planning, implementing, reporting, um, what I would call some of the administrative parts of the job. And then the day-to-day -day supervision, that's the sales managers actually working with the sales force, um, helping them in an ongoing basis, uh, looking at their client base, their proposals, helping them with prospecting, strategizing, all those other facets that are the day-to-day -day activity. So it's a, a key distinction I want to make, though. Again, I'll, I'll go back to that. Sales leadership and sales management, not the same thing. Very different. Um, 
Ideally, you have a sales manager that is also a leader. It's very important. You can have somebody that's a sales manager that is really an administrative type manager and they're not engaged in leadership. And I would say that in a successful marketing strategy, um, a sales manager that is not using leadership qualities is not going to be successful. You have to have a good balance of both. So continuing in directing the sales force, there's some key points to bring up. So field sales managers, again, there are the people that, that have salespeople reporting directly to them. And they spend a tremendous amount of their time engaged with the salespeople either in the field, um, in the office, developing sales strategies and plans for individual accounts and individual clients. Motivation. There's really three key areas, intensity, persistence, and direction. The motivation has to be part of a, an overall reward system. How are the salespeople compensated? Um, what it, does the compensation package look like? Uh, are they rewarded with recognition? And some of that has to be tailored in how a person is motivated to their individual needs, um, being able to understand their goals that are in line with the organization's goals so that we're rewarding the right behavior, that we're incentivizing in the correct way as part of the overall marketing strategy. And the leadership style. Um, Depending on the product, depending on the industry and, and the type of sales force that's being built, there are a lot of different leadership styles. Um, in two large buckets, you could look at that as micromanagement or macromanagement. And in a sales environment, you know, micromanagement may be, may be one where the sales manager is looking at every contract, every proposal, um, what activities the salesperson is doing, who they're calling on, when, and really looking at every detail. More of a macro style is you've put a person in place, um, a sales professional, and you're only looking at the end results. They're free to prospect, build their proposals, do their engagement with the clients, and you're more hands-off, and you're there for support and direction. And then there's a mix in between, of course. but Largely speaking, there's the micro and macro in two different styles. So moving on into the communication and coaching. It's very important in a sales environment. Use coaching as the primary communications tool. And I would add to that and, and skip ahead a little bit down to the using persuasion and promises more frequently than threats. I would even go so far as to say never use threats use coaching. Um, it's a much more effective way to help get the, the behavior and the activity that you need that aligns with the company's goals. And always seek feedback from the salespeople, from the clients. And, and that's always a two-way street between management and the sales force. Use that feedback to tailor the training to provide feedback to product development, to provide feedback into other departments within the company, into finance. How are we positioned with clients? Is it being successful? That feedback is critical because the sales force, in the case of where you've selected a direct sales channel and direct professional selling, that's the method of gathering information on how the market's doing. How is the market responding to your product? That information is critical back to product development for their strategy and improvement and growth in the product down the road. And always establish a team approach, uh, collaborating and learning from each other. When you have a professional sales team and there's a wide variety of different clients, they each bring to the table different skills, different things they learn from the clients and from their market and their background. So continuing with coaching, the last bit here, ensuring that salespeople diagnose their success as well as failures. And I would say it's very important to look at the failures. 
where was the miss? Was it in how we approached a client? Did we look at the wrong client? Do we have the wrong target market for the product suite? You know, understanding that failure and then using that information to tailor your approach for the next target consumer, the next market, is very important. So just simply sitting back and saying, well, I've hit my quota, I've done good, well, what did you miss? What else is out there? Um, it's something to always keep in mind. We learn a lot from that failure and what the market's doing, what our competitors are doing, and what the client needs are. Understanding if we missed what their client needs are, what the benefits they were looking for that didn't match up with our product suite. A very important part, the human side of this. Salespeople are individuals, and every one of them has their particular style. Um, sales managers need to remember they're not a number on a spreadsheet. They're part of an overall structure of the marketing strategy, part of an overall component. They're the face that interfaces with the end client. And understanding how they operate, getting to know them as a person and how to communicate with them. Do they like direct communication? Are they a person that is, you know, you sort of hands off, like we talked about earlier, in the micro versus macro? Some managers have to use a little bit of both skills in micro and macro, depending on the individuals in their sales team. You may have some that need constant feedback, constant engagement from their sales managers. And so you shift into a little bit more of a micro with that person. You may have another that they like to be left alone. They like to do their own thing and seek your input as, as their leader when they need it. You move to a more macro style with them, but remembering that they're all individuals, they're all different. And following up on the coaching sessions. The coaching sessions, it's almost like in the annual reviews. In a sales environment, coaching sessions and reviews happen much more periodically than on an annual basis. They're pretty much on a monthly basis. Um, looking at activities, how things have been going, what the performance has been. And then the important part is when you give advice from sales management to the salesperson, follow up on that. Did it help them? Did they learn something new from that? And finally, at the end of the day, serve as a role model. If you're the sales manager and you're looking for a successful sales team, and part of that overall strategy, you set the pace, your behavior, um, your message that you're sending to them. And it's important as part of adding that leadership into your management, be that role model. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for attending. And I've included a couple of takeaways for some of the other important aspects of directing, coaching, and recruiting. Um, also included some information in the takeaway that you may find valuable in how you arrive at should it be a direct sales force or the other methods. So thank you for your time. Hope you've enjoyed this.